Good morning, everyone. Today, we're working on closing in the horse trailer with some greenhouse plastic over the windows and the back door so that we can store this trailer full of peanut hay. There's peanut hay underneath that tarp, guys. I think there's 18 bales of peanut hay, and that's again so that we have enough um, hay, grain, all that stuff for the goats. Now, in the horse trailer, we already have our um, haul. See all that? There's our haul. of animal feed. Now, on this side, the opposite side from the feed, you can see there's a pallet down. That's where we're putting our peanut hay. So that's our project today. Oh, the sun's really bright today. We're having a brisk, chilly day, but we love it. So, all right, let us, um, let me show you what we're using here real quick. That's a hundred foot work, so you need to figure out how much I need. We just need a like back half of this. Which okay. Means. All right, guys, this is the plastic. We've had this for years. It's a type of, um, it's actually construction plastic, but it could work for a greenhouse. It's a hundred foot long by 20 foot wide. So we're probably only don't unravel too much. We only need like a four foot piece off of this. All right. Hold on guys. Okay, guys, Jim and I just had to go over how we want to use this plastic on the trailer. So basically what we're going to do is our goal is to cover this window and we're going to leave the bottom open, but it's going to be taped all the way down. The bottom is so that any humidity, moisture can sweat right back down the plastic and out. So that is what we're doing here. And this is just an old horse trailer we bought when we started getting goats and you can see it needed some repair. So we've done what we could here and there. And it has served us, here's some more patches we had to do. It has served us well. Here's another patch. What? My boys, are you talking to me? But it serves us as a shelter for the goats periodically. You touch, oh, somebody's gonna get zapped. You didn't get zapped. I'm going to have to test my fence. Hi. Hi, handsome. Hi, handsome. He's such a pretty boy. He's going to have to cut that, cut a horn off of this guy. He's got what's called a scur. And right now it's curling and it looks like it's going to continue to curl and come up instead of down towards his skull, which is great. Here's Mocha. Mocha. Hi, Mocha. The other two are inside eating. <laughs> See, I'm a squeaky boy. I don't I don't cry like a normal goat. He just doesn't, guys. You're my sweet boy. Yes, you are. Look at this guy with the morning sun on him. He is just so pretty. Look at that. Say, hold still. Hold still. <laughs> Until he's a friendly little man. Well, careful. Don't want to get that fence on you. Yeah, okay, a good scratch. Good scratch, big boy. He has grown some since we got him, guys. And he's putting his weight back on since he's come out of rut now. And this guy's not going to finish growing up, I don't think. We're going to try and band him. We're going to weather him and the three young bucklings. But the other two in here, this is breeding stock, so they stay intact. And I'm off target and off subject. Look how cute, though. Oh, my gosh. He's my little man. Hey, little man. Say, look out, I want some of mama's attention. Yeah, oh, you big boy. You can see they're not big goats, they're just little guys. Hey, don't nibble on my finger, he gets jealous. <laughs> All right, back to our project. Hey, don't be so rough on her, she's an old lady. Tundra. Ugh. It's crazy here. Put down about a foot or so from here, then. Uh, take it up to the the metal band. Okay. That way, right, right like that, up to that metal band. Okay, so down and to then, the here, then down to that ridge line. Right yeah. Oop. All the way. 
across. There he goes. All right, that was one down. Now you can probably use this as your template and cut a second one. Might be easier to cut it without having it up against the trailer. There you go. Now just cut your second one. The other way, cat. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, guys. The next part is going to take two hands, and I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, guys. One window done, and it's exactly how I envisioned it which is it's secured right above the window. And this here will help shed the water past the tape. And then this is open to allow for breathing because we're storing things like hay and feed in here. We want the moisture and the uh, some airflow to go through the trailer so nothing starts molding. So that's part of our goal. We went further on this side than we had planned and we had talked about leaving at this access door available, but the things that are stored up here, we probably won't need to get to for about a month and a half. And by then we should be able to get into this trailer by using up some of the other animal feed. So worst comes to worst, we'll peel that open when we need to, to access it. Now we're going to work on this window on this side as our next project. I think we're going to have to move this gate. All right, guys, the second window is done and we did the exact same thing. We left the overlap open for airflow and to, if there gets a moisture buildup on the inside of the plastic, it'll sweat down and out of the trailer. This trailer is not in great condition, but for now it's gonna serve a great purpose. Now we're getting ready to close in these two doors. We have to do them individually. And then from there, we, are, we might have to tape a piece of plastic up over the roof just to cover this gap up here, like a curtain almost. So we'll see. Once this is done, it'll probably stay this way unless we have to change it for any reason down the road. So that's kind of what we're doing. Okay, guys, we got, we decided not to put any plastic on the doors themselves, but we're putting a curtain, if you will, of this plastic so it covers the gap up top and the door part and we'll still be able to access everything inside the trailer, hopefully. <laughs> so we got it up over the top and we're duct taping it to the trailer. Again, this trailer is not new so we're not worried about damaging paint or anything. Jim's got it almost done on this side. I can't see nothing what I'm doing because I got sun in my eyeballs. It's beautiful out today. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I have to cut this off. So That's fine. Just pick where you want your duct tape to finish and we'll trim it up. Or not. <laughs> it depends. Oh, then we have to test to make sure we can open the doors. All right. You can leave that kind down of, long if you want to. Yep, yeah, it's kind of bulky, but the key is to keep everything dry in this trailer right now. That's our only goal, guys. We got quite a bit of money invested in that animal feed and that peanut hay that's going into this trailer. So we don't want to lose that. There's Miss Ginger. You hardly ever see Miss Ginger say. Miss Ginger's getting old. Say, girl. Yeah. You can see under her neck her skin allergies. It's an ongoing problem, guys. There's Troublemaker. Hey, buddy. Come on, Tun Tun. Come on. Mm. That's our puppy. Say, some puppy. You want to stand next to Ginger? You want to sit? Tundra, sit. Look at that, guys. He's learning so good. He's such a good boy. He actually learned the sit command right away. It's the rest of it. <laughs> but he's, as you can see, while I wasn't watching him, that uh, he's staying real close to us instead of running out into the unknown, I call it. <laughs> Crazy dog. He now sleeps in bed with us. 
We tried letting him sleep between Jim and I because we know he needs a lot of room. But he ends up kicking us during the night and Jim's like, oh no, we're not having that. So we, he has to sleep on my side of the bed on the edge of the bed now. So, but he does sleep with me every night. And to me, it's very comforting to have him there. He used to, but he's getting so old. He's struggling to get in and out of bed because our new mattress is a lot higher than the old one. So he does struggle a bit with the height now. And he knows he's tired at night. He doesn't want to jump up on the bed. What are you doing, Bubba? Hi, Bobby. Cody, where are you going, boy? They love these woods, guys. If only I could teach her to poop in these woods. These two, the, uh, the boys do a really good job. Ginger, she'll poop anywhere. How's it going, babe? You can tell he's got his hoodie up. It's a little chilly out here. You see the trees are blowing in the breeze. So I can get you a view over here. Look how blue it is, guys. There's not a cloud to be seen. These are the days I love, love, love being in Florida. And being in my pine forest to me is just heaven. Look at how gorgeous it is. I can't go too far the other way because the sun is glaringly bright today. Cody wants a stick. You got a stick, buddy? You got a stick, huh? <laughs> he has really aged this year, guys, and it's so heartbreaking to see. Yes, yes. I will throw the stick once or twice. That's it, because then you start getting too sore. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be 11 in July, guys. <laughs> what? What? When we adopted him, because he's mixed with Australian Shepherd, they said, oh, he's only going to get 45 pounds. This is an 80-pound dog. <laughs> you can tell. He's also a little overweight. He's a little overweight, yeah, because we used to hike all the time, and he was our hiking buddy. It's one of the reasons we got a, him was to have a dog to hike with. Believe me, if we got lost, that dog would find our way back out of the woods and get us to our vehicle. He has a nose on him that we absolutely were impressed with. He loves hiking. He used to anyway. Tape this down here as a temporary tape to where we, when we needed to get in there, we can get in there. I don't know. Do I don't know. Not right now. We got to load it. <laughs> yeah. These two are back here Most playing. The comes from that way is what I was thinking. He plays with Ginger a lot. Ginger tolerates a lot more than Cody will. She's like, let me alone. Tundra, she's, she's don't, not wanting to play, dude. You got to know when to say enough. He's after a root, see that? That's a root to the pine tree. <laughs> I'm going to go get a, I got a roll of, of gorilla tape out in the, in the shed over there. I'm going to put one strip of the gorilla tape. You think it's really that much different than uh, it's duct tape? It's definitely got a thicker, it's, it's a thicker material and, and thickier. Okay. All right. You're the boss when it comes to this. All right, I'm going to put this back in the shed, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Do you have one of the hammer staplers in the shed? Yeah, why? Well, I was going to take this scrap plastic and close in some more of the buck pen. What do you think? All right, guys, that's it for this project. We're going to load it. I'll bring you back for one final shot after it's loaded, and we'll show you what we did as far as getting it loaded. I wanted to show you the peanut hay. I don't know if you can see it. Look how green it is, guys. When there's nothing else growing, for the winter, this stuff is wonderful protein for your livestock. My goats love this stuff. I give this to both my bucks and my does. And they're getting, the does are getting a lot more right now because we have two getting ready to kid. So, so far that's what we got there. You can see we're starting to empty the trailer. Let's see how the, the... oh, look at that. 
It's fitting in here pretty nicely. And I really like that it's light in here because we didn't put something dark up on the windows. So that's really nice. Guys, I almost finished, forgot to finish my video. The hay is all done and in the horse trailer we put I think seven bales in our hay shed. As you can see, the trailer is empty, but look at the mess it makes. That's all edible peanut hay. It's a shame, I actually need to put some goats here. But as you see, there we go. There's seven bales in here, which is, normally this is where we store all our hay. But since we're stocking for the next three months, we've changed things up. We are adding our next project is going to be adding a second hay shed that'll hold two of these big eight to thousand, 800 to 1,000 pound rolls of hay. We do buy the rounds because it's the only thing we can get that's affordable around here. And it is an orchard mix, so it's great for the goats. And our goats love it. So, and that'll be another project. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me and following my channel. I really do appreciate it. And um, this is just one layer of prepping a lot of folks don't talk about. It is an important layer of prepping is having livestock feed on hand to get you through a bad situation. And that could be a job loss. It could be health issues. It could be like my situation would be hurricanes. So everything we build has to be as watertight and windproof as possible. And so, so, so far we have been very, very lucky here. We have had some hurricanes get very close to us, but we've had no major damage from them. But let's hope that trend continues. It's almost like we have a pocket here of protection, which is pretty amazing. Even when it rains, we'll watch the rains come in across the back here and they literally just circle around our property and go off in, <laughs> south of us, which is amazing to watch. But then we also don't get the rains we need. Now, for our next project, we want to put it here, which will be where the next hay shed is going to go. So this all has to be cleaned out first. That So we're taking a break right now because Jim's knees are really bothering him today. Too much ladder work, obviously. And then he was climbing that gate to tape that roof. So we're taking a break and we'll start on the next project if he feels up to it today. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to take care and God bless y'all. And we'll see you on the next video.